Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am back with another awesome little mini PC from Simply Nook known as the Topaz i7. They make a few different variants of this. They have the i3, the i5, but I chose to pick up the i7. Now, before we get started here, I do want to mention that this was purchased with my own money. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I've been really interested in picking up the new Tiger Lake powered NUX, be it the Panther Canyon or Tiger Lake, whatever they're calling it. But unfortunately, I just can't get a hold of an i7 version. But I noticed that Simply Nook recently launched two different lines. They have the Topaz, which is powered by the new Tiger Lake 11th Gen Intel CPUs. And they also offer their new Ruby line, which is powered by the fourth generation Ryzen mobile chips. But I've been doing a lot of Ryzen on my channel, and I kind of wanted to swap it over a little bit. So like I mentioned, this is known as the Topaz i7. It's powered by the 11th Gen Intel 1165G7 with those new built-in Intel XE graphics. As you can see, I mean, this thing is super tiny. It does have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the front, so we can add an eGPU to this, and I'll be making a separate video on that because I just received a really nice eGPU that I wanted to test with this little unit here. So along with the Topaz itself, you're also going to receive the power supply. And I was surprised to see that this is actually a 90 watt power supply. We should be able to get the maximum performance out of this 1165G7 because we do have some options in the BIOS to set this to performance mode. And when it comes to these new Tiger Lake CPUs and laptops, most of the time they're limited on the TDP around 15 to 18 watts. But with this one here, we should be able to pull up to 35 watts, getting the maximum performance out of this chip. So taking a look at the front of the Topaz, as you can see, we have our 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We also have two USB type C ports. These are actually Thunderbolt 3. We also have two USB 3.2 ports and our power button up front here. There's not a lot to see on each side, but we do have some pretty decent ventilation here. And moving around back, we have our power input. It'll do 12 volts to 19 volts. And like I mentioned, it comes with a 90 watt power supply. Two more USB 3.2 ports, full-size HDMI, full-size DisplayPort, and dual Ethernet. One of them is Gigabit, the other one is 2.5 Gigabit. These also come pre-installed with an 802.11ax200 Wi-Fi card, so we have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't pick one of these up bare bones from Simply Nook. The lowest configuration they offer is 4 gigs of RAM and a 128 gigabyte M.2, but I definitely wanted to upgrade and I can get out cheaper, plus I already have the parts laying around. And it's really easy to upgrade one of these. It will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, but I'm going to be adding 16 gigabytes running at 32. So two 8 gig sticks. I definitely want this running in dual channel. And if you notice, Simply Nook has also added an extra M.2 slot here. So if you do want to run two M.2s in here, it works out just fine. It does support NVMe, at least in the slot on the PC side. And that's what I'm going to be upgrading this to. And what I have here is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 SODEM RAM from Crucial running at 3200 megahertz, two 8 gig sticks, and a silicon power 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Now, I kind of wish I would have done a little more research or this would have been listed somewhere. But this is actually an ASRock Nook 1165G7 industrial version. Initially, going into this, I thought that this was going to be the Intel version that they just kind of recased, but it's not. It's the ASRock version, so we don't have Thunderbolt 4, but we do have two Thunderbolt 3s on the front. Another thing that Simply Nook has added is a little bit of an LED here. Team Blue for Intel, Team Red for AMD, so their Ruby does have a red light inside of it. So real quick, we'll just go over the basic specs here. We have that Intel Tiger Lake i7 1165G7, four cores, eight threads, base clock 2.8 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.7. The GPU is the new Intel Iris Xe graphics. This is the one with 96 execution units at 1300 megahertz. And as you saw, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. Okay, so first things first, I wanted to go into the BIOS real quick and just give you a look. Under advanced here, I'm gonna head over to CPU configuration because I definitely wanna get as much as I can out of this unit. CPU operation mode, we can go 10, 15, 20, or performance mode, which Intel states this is a 28 watt chip. But in my experience, I've actually seen these pull up to 40 watts and they kind of average out around 32. Performance mode is definitely what I want with this because I want the most out of the graphics and the CPU. Basically, that's about it in here. Um, I can also go over and just change the fan curve if I want to. Leave it at smart, auto, full on. I'm going to leave it at smart fan. And yeah, I mean, that's about all I'm going to change in here for now. 
Okay, so as I'm making this part of the video, I've done a little bit of testing and I'm really impressed with this 1165G7, especially in performance mode. It does a really good job for a super tiny PC like this. Now, if you do pick one of these up, it's not going to be specifically designed for gaming, but we will get into some testing. One thing I always like to test here is WebGL performance. So we'll just head over here. We're at 500 fish, 60 FPS, 1000, 15. We might be able to make it up to 20. 15, we're still at 60, and that's about the cutoff. And with this here, let's just check that. We're at 75% here on the GPU and 35 on the CPU. It is at 4 gigahertz, dropping down to around 3. Web browsing on something like this is not going to be an issue whatsoever. Let's head over to Simply Nook's website. With that Wi-Fi 6 built in, it'll breeze through basically anything here. So you're not going to have any trouble at all with web browsing. Now I want to move over to some 4K video playback and usually when I do a test like this, I'm actually recording at 1080p, but I'm going to hook this up to a real 4K monitor just so we can see what this thing can do. First up, native 4K video playback. This is a video that's stored on the NVMe drive. This is 4K, 60fps, 35 megabits per second. Looking great here, no stutters, it's playing it at full speed. Next up, YouTube 4K streaming. This is running at 4K 60 FPS. I got two drop frames here, that's something you'll never notice. So if you did want to do 4K video with this, it will do it just fine. And by the way, we do have four video outputs on this. HDMI, DisplayPort, and those two USB Type-C ports on the front can act as video out. So you can have four monitors connected to this little mini PC at any given time. Next thing I did was just run a couple benchmarks. First up we have Geekbench 5. Single core is looking really good here at 1409. Multi-core is definitely falling behind the Ryzen mobile APUs given that they have more cores and threads. But 5441 for a quad core mobile chip is looking really good with Geekbench 5 here. 3D Mark, now this is really going to test out those built-in Intel XE graphics. And for Night Raid, 16,967. Next up, we have Fire Strike with a 4,347. And finally, Time Spy coming in with a 1,669. Looking really good for integrated Intel graphics here in these benchmarks, if you ask me. I definitely had to test out some gaming on this little machine, so I got about eight games here. First up, Fortnite 1080p medium settings, 100% resolution scale. Very impressed here. I got an average of 73 FPS. Now remember, we set this to performance mode in the BIOS, and if we take a look at the wattage on the CPU up in the top left-hand corner with Afterburner, it jumps up to around 42 watts every once in a while, but we're around 38. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, medium low mix. I did have to drop some of this stuff down to low. I got an average of 62 FPS. Given the size of this unit, I think we're getting really good performance here. Overwatch, 1080p, medium settings. Going into this, I knew we were gonna get good performance out of it. This is a very well optimized game. Got an average of 73 FPS out of this one. And if we take a look at that wattage, we're still up there around 37 to 38 watts on this Intel CPU. CSGO, 1080p, high settings, got an average of 88. And going into this, I thought we'd actually get a little better out of this one at high settings. But if you need any more than an average of 88 FPS, Drop it down to medium and you'll be good to go. But this looks great here and it's playing just fine. Warframe 1080p, medium low settings. I got an average of 75 FPS out of this one. So taking it up a bit, here we have Doom Eternal. Now I really wanted to run this at 1080p, but I did have to drop it down to 720p, low with a 50% resolution scale, just to get an average of 55 out of this one.
And the final game I tested with the integrated Intel XE graphics was Cyberpunk 2077. Low settings, 720p, 32 FPS average. I also measured total system power draw from the wall using a kilowatt meter at idle 11.3 watts, 4K video playback 16.2. And keep in mind, we're in performance mode, but when I stress out the CPU and the GPU at the same exact time, I can get this thing to pull up to 71.1 watts from the wall, which is insane for a super small form factor PC like this. But remember, this is set in performance mode. If you're just set in normal mode, which will run this CPU at 28 watts, you'll never see power consumption like this, but personally, I wanted the most out of this thing, so I set it to performance. So in the end, I definitely consider this a high performance mini PC. It's the best performer that I've tested at this form factor, but keep in mind, I have not tested the 4800U in a form factor like this yet. Hopefully I can get my hands on one in the next few weeks. But overall, for what we have here, this is a little powerhouse, and I'm starting to really like these integrated XE graphics that Intel's come up with. Now, I do have at least one more video planned for this thing. I have a new eGPU that I wanted to test out on it. I just plugged it in to make sure everything worked. It did download the drivers, and I think we can get some amazing performance out of that, so stay tuned to the channel. But if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one of these up and you want to get out a bit cheaper and you don't mind losing a couple ports, I would just go with the ASRock Nook. You can pick them up on Amazon and Newegg. I'll leave a few links in the description. But it's basically the same thing with a different shell on it. And we're missing one USB port from the front. But it does come in a lot cheaper. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.